Thank you, Mark. Hello, everybody. Um, I, I have the, uh, the privilege of being the first off um, and uh, would like to introduce this, uh, this ex excellent publication which has been put together uh, for the by the Agriculture for Impact Project. Um, in it, you'll find um, eight, eight organizations pre presenting between them 12 case studies. Um, and it's all about market linkage. Uh, the, the opening sentence says, finding business solutions to tackle hunger and undernutrition in sub-Saharan Africa continues to sit at the top of the global political agenda. Um, I was just having a conversation here with Steve about business, and I, I would suggest also that finding business solutions or finding solutions involving businesses, I think is a, a, slight, a slight difference there because I think a, a lot of what we do in the NGO sector is more the latter. In Farm Africa, we are putting our first, we've put our first toe into the water for a couple of years now with a subsidiary which is genuinely a business, but a lot of what we're trying to do also is more involving businesses. Um, I, if I may, Mark, I'll speak for about 10 minutes, if that's okay. Um, and I'd just like to say a little bit about Farm Africa and what we're doing. Um, I rather presumptuously have kind of thought I'm addressing the G8, um, rather than this extremely distinguished and highly knowledgeable audience. So you'll forgive me if occasionally I seem to be stating the, the rather obvious. But sometimes things need to be said which are because they're often, uh, obvious is often overlooked. Um, to Farm Africa, we work with smallholder farmers, and these include uh, not only the growers of crop, but livestock raisers, fish rearers, and also people who live in forests and collect forest products such as honey and resins and so forth. Uh, of course, many farmers are involved in more than one of these activities, but a common feature of all our, our beneficiaries is that they operate on a small scale and are mostly very poor. We work in just five countries in Eastern Africa and we've been doing this for more than 25 years. Uh, like, and this is where I'm now addressing the G8, if you'll excuse me. Like the other organizations that have contributed to this report, uh, Farm Africa wants to bring to the attention of the G8 government what needs to be done and what can be done to help large numbers of small-scale African farmers lift themselves out of what is more or less a subsistence or semi-subsistence existence move fully into the market economy. Now, why, why is this important? Perhaps to state the obvious. For two reasons. First, because it's the only surefire way of achieving pervasive food security, by which I mean food for rural Africa, by which I mean food security for everyone, wherever they are, whatever they happen to be doing. And secondly, because for the majority of poor countries, um, inclusive agricultural growth is the most efficient driver of overall economic development. I always think it's very instructive to look at that curve, that look at the relationship between a country's average per capita income and some key indicator of well being, uh, such as infant mortality. If you plot all the countries of the world, uh, average income, infant mortality, it's the lazy L curve. Uh, and the point about this is that with modest increases in average income per capita, in absolute terms, of course, quite big in proportionate terms, you get very, very rapid um, in, uh, improvements in indicators such as infant mortality, life expectancy at birth, and, and, and so on. I mean, why is this relevant? Well, obviously, uh, again, I mustn't overuse that word. Um, Good nutrition is clearly fundamental to indicators such as fundamental to the health of mother and child and therefore to, to child survival. Um, so anything which can be done to produce farmers to, to boost farmers' capacity to produce more food, whether to consume it themselves or to sell it or to produce more non-food which they can sell and buy food with, is a necessary first step to getting those real improvements in welfare. And secondly, uh, for most uh, rural Africans, the only realistic way of earning more is to engage in some kind of agriculture or agricultural-related activity, some kind of agribusiness. 
So we need to help them turn farming into a commercial enterprise or to add value to what they're already producing or to work with others to add value uh, or to um, work f uh, for others. That's the, the, the essential second step. And this is the, as you all know, the tried, classic, tested, proven model of economic growth and development. S let's get into the cycle. You improve productivity of farming. The rural sector becomes more prosperous. It creates a market for um, basic consumables and services which the manufacturing and service sectors can provide. That also creates more jobs. <coughs> Um, that they expand, they can produce inputs which are better and at lower cost, it feeds back into agriculture and you go round and round. And what we're really trying to do, I th often think of it, and this is kind of a personal view, is that we're what we're often trying to do is to replicate this macro process of economic growth and diversification at the micro level by helping our small farmers get into this virtuous cycle which means helping them to connect to markets from which they can buy inputs and connect to markets uh, into which they can sell their product uh, or set themselves up as input suppliers or output processors, uh, traders, uh, and so on, upstream or downstream. And I would, this is not some kind of social welfare. This is uh, hard-nosed good economics. And that's why our mission statement refers, which you saw, might have just called a fleeting glimpse of at the beginning, refers to the unleashing of African farmers' ability to grow their incomes in a sustainable manner. The locked-up potential is huge, and, and as we've heard, of course, the key is access to markets. The third point I'd like to make is that if you can get to scale uh, and, and generate investments at relative low cost, um, this is the secret because a little goes a very long way at the level we're working. And a, a second thing I'd like to, to share from our, with our experience from Farm Africa is that our experience, and I'm sure others have found the same, is that however poor they are, smallholder farmers, once shown, recognise the value of improved varieties of crops, better breeds of livestock, good quality, reliable inputs, which actually do what they say on the tin, and sound impartial advice. And they are prepared to pay for it as soon as they can. And of course, they can be helped in various ways to get to that situation. Because for their particular investments, the returns on, this, on these outlays can be very big indeed. And just uh, to conclude, um, in, in our in our uh, couple of pages here, we, we talk about um, two case studies uh, in which we're helping small-scale rural producers connect to markets. And I'm very happy to, to say that uh, they are Steve's internal markets in both cases. Um, the first one is uh, a sesame production in Tanzania, uh, where we um, help lay the foundations by our first phase in the project. We, we simply did what we've done for, for, for a long time uh, and, and um, we like to think we're reasonably good at after 25 years, helping farmers get better yields, better quality product. Uh, and we're following this up by helping them gain greater control over the marketing of sesame and more of the value added at the final sale. Um, and the crucial ingredient in this was to help them set up a, a agricultural marketing cooperative. They built themselves a warehouse. They borrowed money from us. They repaid it in five months. Um, and this enabled us to help them put in an, a warehouse receipt system, which, uh, which allows farmers depositing sesame in the warehouse. It's a collateral, which means they can get credit. Uh, quite a, a well-known model, but um, this is what we're doing. And uh, the second example is a very interesting one. It's our subsidiary SIDI, a Maasai word for good, in which we're working on the input side. Um, uh, Africa, uh, Eastern Africa is plagued by low quality, often fake, uh, huge uh, uh, veterinary and healthcare, animal healthcare and feed products. Um, and it's, it's very difficult for, s for small 
livestock raisers to get access to good inputs and particularly to get access to good impartial advice. On the screen there is a typical agro dealer. This is our kind of before situation. And we've, we've set up a franchising business in which we set people up uh, in basically in stores, which this is actually a company-run store. We have three company-run stores and 35 franchisees at the moment. Um, uh, they, they, they don't, the, the franchisees' shops don't look quite as grand as that, but basically they get the brand, which is the symbol of reliability and good inf partial information. They get the shop makeover and the colours, and they get this very welcoming note. There's no grill. You've got the information. It's all there. Walk in and get what you want for your livestock. And very interestingly, we're now already the biggest buyer of veterinary products in Kenya, the biggest single buyer, uh, from you know, dozens and dozens of suppliers. Um, interestingly, the presence of SIDI now is forcing other agro-dealers to raise their game. Um, final point, um, both these proje <laughs> projects, the Sesame uh, marketing project in Tanzania and the, the livestock input uh, program, franchise program in, in Kenya, they are both intended and are on the way to becoming fully self-financing. So that after the initial dollop of aid, um, some of it grant, some of it loan, they shouldn't need any more. And that, I think, is real sustainability. Thank you.